I'm Matt Kennedy. I'm the Regional Weeds Coordinator for Hunter Local Land Services. Giant Parramatta grass has a few different control measures. You can put these into a couple of different buckets. We've got herbicide control, we've got biological control, and we've got physical or uh, mechanical control. We're talking a couple of different methods of application as well. We can talk spraying, and that can either be by spot spraying or boom spraying. Um, and then there is also wick wiping or weed wiping, uh, which is another form of application. Each one of them has their own places in GPG management. When using herbicide, the time of year is very important. The plants have to be actively growing to really uptake that chemical and get an effective kill. But you're not treating over that middle of winter period when there's no growth in the plant, where the plant won't take that chemical up. When we're not talking water wall and we're talking more isolated infestation patches, what we'd be considering then is we could be considering spot spraying. Again, you could be using a selective herbicide for propionate chemical. Um, or you could be spot spraying with glyphosate um, as a non-selective herbicide, but you really have to watch then how much you're spraying, where you're spraying it to not get an overkill. And you have to note that those areas, seedlings will come back and you have to monitor those sites, retreat, and then implement some other form of management, whether that be soil improvement or your stocking rates, your, your bare patch management, so that there's no bare ground for those germinations to occur. Biological control, it never will kill an entire population of a weed. What it is doing is it's limiting that weed's potential to spread and its competitive advantage above other desirable plants. We do have one biological control agent that is available. A, natural, a naturally occurring fungus in Australia is known to affect uh, giant Parramatta grass and all sporobolus species to a degree. Uh, it creates a crown rot in the plant where it actually let the plant itself rots out, uh, weakens it, allows it to not thrive and not gain that competitive advantages that it has. Yeah, you can either translocate known plants that have this fungus already on it into your paddocks. Before you do that, you should really consider where you're transplanting from. If, you know, the best place for these control methods is where we're wanting long-term management over time, where we've got perhaps less productivity out of those parcels of land, or we've got less ability to manage them ongoingly. So we're putting the biological control agent into that environment so it kicks along over time and is limiting its spread off that, part, that, that paddock. We're not looking for a direct kill, um, increase in productivity straight away. While slashing is a good way to remove a lot of the bulk of the plant, giant Parramatta grass does grow quite click, quickly. And so any slashing operation needs to be done in line with other control methods, or you need to keep your slashing on very regularly, looking at you know every three months odd at least, to manage that bulk down. We're trying to get the slasher in before seed heads develop, so that we're actually trying to break a seed cycle so that there's less seed going back into my system and I'm controlling all the available seed that's germinating up. Your land management practices really impact how GPG is going to thrive or not on your property. Your stocking rates, your soil health, your nutrient um, levels, your fertilizing regimes, all will impact how GPG responds and either contracts or grows larger on your property. You really need to consider all aspects of this when you're, when you're going to enter into a GPG control program and you should really be planning this out for an actual weed management plan and sticking to that plan of management so that you know your outcomes are what you are trying to achieve, you know you're on task to get there and you know you're going to get it. Otherwise, you might find that if you're just using one form of control but still stocking at the same rate, you're actually creating more and more bare ground so you're, so you're never actually going to be on top of that GPG. You need to consider all aspects of how you're managing that paddock to actually gain a longer 
return outcome from your management.